So it was a great season overall. Now they're talking about what happened, who's injured. And how to get better for next okay. year. It was all over, uh, including the crying today. The Montreal Canadiens held their player post-mortem today in Brassard. The list of injuries is extensive, some conventional, but others quite serious. Here's Brian Wild. It was the first time Lars Eller spoke to the media since suffering an injury in game one, and it's frankly scary to hear him. I don't remember much. Uh, I, there's a good... It was a good gap of a uh, 10 minute period where I don't re remember anything. Um, but uh, you know, I'm happy where, to be where I am today and feeling how I'm feeling. And you know, uh, matter of fact, as I'm getting close to you know actually be playing again, so um, you know, okay, it could have been a lot, a lot worse. We had known of Gianta's bicep surgery and Pacioretty's shoulder separation. Add to that Brandon Prust, who will need a shoulder scope and had a dislocated rib that he himself put back into place. I was skating it and skating it up the ice and just it popped out. And then I was pretty in a lot of pain for a little while and it ended up popping back in. So it's fine now, just got to let it heal. Next in line in a shockingly serious list of injuries was Ryan White, who had a punctured lung and who could barely breathe when he fought Jared Cowan. You know, I just, you know, made a little hole and there's a little bit of air in there right now. So, you know, it, it's supposed to get better by itself and, you know, it sounds worse than it actually is. You know, I'm not, I'm not dying here or anything. I'm not here. <laughs> Next up, Carey Price with a second degree MCL sprain of his knee, a six week rehab, no surgery. He suffered it on the 2-2 goal in game four. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough one. But, um, you know, we can't, uh, we can't make excuses. Um, I thought we had uh, we had plenty of opportunities in that series to uh, to own it, and uh, it just didn't happen for us. Some players even managed to stay healthy, but probably played their last Habs game. Ryder, Halpern, Armstrong. Kind of just left it as uh, can't rule it out, but uh, obviously can't guarantee anything. So I know how the business works with that stuff, and uh, you know building their team moving forward. And, Appreciated the opportunity to come in this year for sure. Uh, but I, I give a lot of respect to the, the coaches and the management group here and, and uh, see what happens. Well, at the end of the day, it's a coach's decision and GM's decision, and you know, I'm, I'm not complaining. You know, uh, It is what it is. No doubt the roster will change. It always does. But how? What is needed to get better? Do they need to be bigger? It's about winning those battles in the corner, winning the battles in front of the net, being hungrier, being stronger on the puck than the opposition, and um, we have that. We have that tenaciousness. It, it, it doesn't have to be about size. It's about desire. Um, everybody was on the same page. Uh, I can't remember, you know, one time where guys were on their own page or thinking about themselves. Everybody was always thinking about the team, and I think that's why we had so much success this year. As far as the World Championships go, two Canadians are confirmed, Thomas Plekanitz and Alex Galchenyuk. Interestingly enough, P.K. Subban says that he has not received a call. If he did, 100% every time, he says, he would play for his country. Brian Wild, CTV Sports. Following Wednesday's loss to the Red Bulls, the Montreal Impact was hoping to get things back on track today against Real Salt Lake at Saputo Stadium. Things did not start out well for the home team. Just six minutes in, Lavelle Palmer gets a pass into the middle, and impact defender Matteo Ferrari accidentally tips it into his own net, getting past keeper Troy Perkins, 1-0 RSL. 39th minute, though, impact gets their revenge. Justin Mapp down the right side puts it in front of Felipe Martins, beats keeper Nick Romando, ties things up at 1. 77th minute, corner kick, Kyle Beckerman jumps on a loose ball, gets the shot off, he scores, the captain regains the lead for RSL 2-1. like his hair. This time the lead lasted just three minutes, though, as veteran Marco DeVaio, wide open, gets it off the post and in, ties it up at two, and talk about an exciting finish. And added time, Ferrari takes a sliding shot, finds the back of the net, his first goal of the season. He's so excited, he takes his shirt off. The impact completes the comeback, coming out on top 3-2. Here's Andre Corbet with a full recap. Well, Chantal, plenty of good storylines when it's a 3-2 outcome, but uh, I think the best story in this one is Matteo Ferrari, the goal in extra time for the victory here at Saputo Stadium. But if we take a few steps back and we remember that loss uh, at New York, 
Ferrari was the one who was faced to watch the brilliant uh, bicycle kick by Thierry Henry to clinch that game. So he's had to live with that all week long. I'm sure he's seen the video over and over again. And then today, his own goal in the seventh minute that put the impact down one nothing. But he battled back. So did the players. A lot of character in this one. So everybody feeling pretty good, including the man himself, Matteo Ferrari. I was sad for the team, of course, because uh, I was unlucky also. And uh, the best, the worst way to, to start this game was with an out, the own goal. So, But uh, like I said before, we had a good character to come back twice. And at the end, we have these three points that for us uh, are very important. He has some inside he wants to make better. And uh, also, uh, he's uh, also be, and then until, until the end, he was every time ready to make maybe this mistake from the first half to make better in the second half. And that's. That's a lot of character, that's, that's true. Yeah. You can't uh, uh, win every time with the quality, but you need also the, to win uh, some, uh, some match with the, with the character, with the, with the find. Find in the, in the match, we find in the match the, the, the win and then some, some, somewhere, and then uh, and, uh, we are uh, happy for, for this. The week and a half we've had, the travel, and, and you know, we go to New York and we play well, but we still don't get a result, and uh, to go down, you know, 1-0 and then, you know, we come back is, is a tremendous result and it shows a lot of character for us. Following the locker room interviews, uh, Chantal, and also the coaches' news conference, the word that came up the most was character and a very character-like win for the Montreal Impact here today and a few reasons why. Of course, they were down by a goal twice in this game and won it in extra time, and that's always entertaining. But more importantly, their scheduling, the heavy legs showing in the first half, and they battled back to make a game of it and eventually winning it, of course. Today was the seventh game in 21 days, and by Wednesday, they'll have played eight games in 24 days. And in soccer terms, that's a lot of action and then if you pile in the injuries by the Montreal Impact it's uh, simply incredible the Montreal Impact losing key players again today not in the lineup the captain Davy Arnault Poponi's not there Pisanu's not there and Nesta on the back line makes a big difference guys going in and out of position uh, just to simply make a match of it and a tremendous effort by the club sticking together in this one gutting it out for the huge victory. Now moving forward, they will have to keep that same character because it's the Vancouver Whitecaps in leg one of the Canadian Championship final right here at Saputo Stadium on Wednesday. I'm André Carbet, CTV Sports. And that's a look at sports. Thank you, Chantal. It is World Fair Trade Day today. We're going to talk about what that means right after the break.